What's up everybody, welcome to another episode of Fluff Hammer. Today we are going to be doing um, a painting a uh, power sword, wet blending, uh, without using an airbrush. Um, generally I tend to use the airbrush these days, but I know a lot of people don't have them, so it's always good to be able to do it with wet blending and a paintbrush. Um, you will need a wet palette for this, but I mean, you probably could get away without one if you've just got a normal palette. You just have to thin your paints a bit more to make sure it doesn't get too dry because um, having that consistency is key. Um, basically we're going to be doing it on the uh, Dark Angels, don't know if you can pick that up. It is a um, super nice power sword. I haven't done it like for super smooth blends, so I've kind of gone with a bit of texture, kind of choppy effect on it. I'll do another one for like just super smooth gradients um, in the future. Um, I'm really trying to a new format on these videos. I'm trying to get a bit more production content. I've got a new camera, new mic, everything. Um, I've just been using my phone recently. It's just so much easier. The cameras are quite difficult. But um, yeah, I filmed some B-roll. Um, I've got it all ready to go. So I really hope you enjoy the new videos. If you could like, share, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think about this format as opposed to just where I do the direct tutorials. Uh, that would be absolutely awesome. So uh, power swords, here we go. Okay, so first off we're going to be using an Artist Opus Series S. Um, we're going to go in with Pro Acryl, uh, I think it's coal black. Um, any black will do, Aberdeen black, um, anything like that. Um, and then Ink by Darkness from Sidel. Great colour this is, it's great for blues, it's great for starting teal colours, it's absolutely awesome. Um, game colour, electric blue, we've then also got Cantor Blue from Citadel as well. Or is that? No, it's Calador Sky, sorry. Um, and then just getting them all out on the wet palette. If you aren't using a wet palette, like I said, it's preferable if you can, but if you can't, then I would probably suggest getting the colour out kind of two at a time. So start with your black and your ink by darkness. Um, use them until you're kind of finished and then add the colours um, afterwards because if not they'll just dry before you get around to the next layer so first off straight all over um, with the pro acryl black i really like it it's super matte which is really helpful um, that's generally the kind of looks i prefer i prefer matte as opposed to gloss on most things unless you're doing something specific like blood splat or something like that that's generally where i go to um, Next up, we're going to be going into Ink by Darkness. So how I'm going to do the power sword is I'm going to aim for the top side to be black at the tip of the blade and then lightest at the hilt of the blade. And then the bottom side will be the reverse. So we will have lightest at the tip and then black at the hilt. Um, and it generally just gives you a really cool look. To the, to the sword so as you can see now I'm going inky by darkness I'm leaving black at the top of the blade at the tip and I'm leaving black at the bottom of the blade at the hilt and then I'm working my way back with the ink by darkness it's nice and thin so as you move the brush you know where, where you finish the brush stroke is where it will deposit the most pigment so I'm kind of pushing up the blade to, to kind of give most of the ink by darkness towards the tip and here I'm just thinning it out with some extra water and then I'm just going back in and just feathering over it so you don't get like a hard edge line from inky by darkness to black so I've done it quite watery anyway probably 50 50 maybe a little bit more water um, which is, is good for blending and then obviously on top I've added more water again and, and gone back in and, and refined that that blends so it's smoother and uh, now I'm just adding in some of the Calador Sky uh, I just mixed it on the wet palette 
And again, it's followed the exact same process, but whereas the Ink by Darkness probably went four fifths of the way up the blade, this is now going to go roughly kind of three fifths of the way up the blade or down the blade, depending on which way you're looking. And as we're going along, we're also adding edge highlights to the top and bottom of the blade on the edge. And then normally you have a single line ridge down the power sword. This one's got um, kind of double ridge down the middle where there's a like a black recess. So I'm just edge highlighting all that as I go as well. Uh, I've started adding some of the electric blue into that as well. And again, straight away, starting with the edges, as you can see the ridge better there on the video. Um, and then when we went four fifths up and then three fifths up, now we're going to aim to go kind of two fifths up the blade. But this is where I'm going to be starting to add some texture. So instead of going for direct, like just smooth fade from one to the other, I'm going to add some little choppy lines in. Um, as you can see now, I'm going to pull them at about a 45 degree angle. And, and it just gives the blade a bit more character um, rather than just having it totally smooth. I will do another video for totally smooth blades. Because um, as you can see, that it does look really good when it's smooth. But I just like the effect where you just add a bit more, bit more texture, a bit more detail. Um, so, yeah, we're working into that now. We started to add a little bit of white into the mix. And this is the good thing with the wet palette. You can literally just go um, one in after the other, after the other, after the other. And it's seamless blends. As you can see, I've probably got maybe eight or nine different tones now on the, on the wet palette. Um, so you, you, you aren't having to kind of dip in one, dip in the other, anything like that. You can continuously kind of seamlessly add just a little bit of each colour and work your way through. Um, but like I said, it's, it's the following the same process again, the tip of the blade, the edge of the blade, edge highlighting, and then right where you want it the brightest, we're going to just add, here we go, the choppy lines. So it's just, yeah, roughly 45 degree angle and just cutting across the blade and trying to get a smooth kind of texture to it as such, rather than a really rough texture like you would get from like say stippling or something. And then I'm just adding a few really fine kind of like energy crackles or scratches into the blade as well. Um, they're just random. You can put them wherever you want, really. But yeah, I'm just kind of blending into that now. And then what I'm going to do is just just follow that process again and just add a little bit more white into the into the process. And, and follow those same kind of rules again. Quick swap of a brush here. I'm going out from the Artis Opus size one to the size zero. And that's because now I'm kind of getting into the real fine detail of it all. This helps because when you're doing these edge highlights, you, you can just jump to these at the end, but I like to keep it consistent and keep it going. So I've edge highlighted the whole way through with all the colors and tried to add finer highlights of each colour so you do get a gradient even on the edges of the blade it's very difficult to do some people just jump to the white at the end and, and go around the edges and stuff but I also find it's much easier to transition if you if you're building up the colours on that edge where that sword was black if you just jump straight into white at the end you're probably going to need to do three four coats of, of white to get it to jump from black to white whereas as you're going along it's a few seconds to just kind of dip into your other colours as you go through. So for me, that makes more sense to follow it that way. Um, and here we are again. Yeah, just use the edge of your brush. You tip it sideways. Um, uh, wet palettes are great as well for controlling how much paint you have on the brush. As you can see, I was then just dragging it across the wet palette, making sure that it's not too heavily loaded because that will really cause you a problem if you've, you know, if you've got blobs, that, that doesn't work for kind of edge highlighting or anything. You need to have the, the paint controlled. Um, and here again, just using that really fine brush to get the white lines through, the, the um, fine little energy crackles. And then, yeah, just building up the colour, layer by layer, just building it up. As you can see, this probably now the second go over with that same colour. 
just building the layers. That's, that's all it is really, patience and layers. Just keep building and building and building. It's really important that you, you kind of follow through through gradients because that's really what sells a good paint job in, in my opinion is is gradients you know you have to go from one to the other to the other if you look at anything in real life you could probably look at you know a table or something and you could see probably 15 shades of color as it goes from from light to dark where the light hits it so it's, it's that smooth gradient that i think really sells a paint job so it's important and there we are, just getting some close-up video of it now. And we're all done. Just trying to get focus, there we are. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, here's the finished product. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial for the Dark Angel Power Swords. Um, please, yeah, like I said at the start, like, subscribe share with your friends comment below if there's anything you want to see let me know how you like the new video format um, and then again I'll stick my element games link down below um, if you do any purchases if you click through that link that just gives me a tiny little kickback to something a bit useful so I can buy some more hobby um, I'm thinking about doing a patreon where I would um, paint stuff and then give it away so uh, patreon members depending on your like membership level um, the more you pay, the more entries you get every time I do a giveaway. And what I'll do is I'll use the money from the Patreon to buy stuff to paint, paint it up, and then give it away to a Patreon member at the end of like every month. Um, so if that sounds like a good idea, again, if you let me know in the comments, if I've got enough people interested, then we'll start doing it. Um, so anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.